Hello and welcome to Embraer TV. We're live from Paris on day three of the air show. Unfortunately, this is our last show on Embraer TV that we've got for you. I'm your host, Arthur Williams. But don't worry, we've still got plenty of action to come, including words from Embraer's president and CEO, Paolo Cesar, about what he's made of the last three days here in Paris. We'll also be watching stunning displays from the two largest aircraft ever produced by Embraer, the beautiful military cargo airplane, the KC-390, as well as the Prophet hunter itself the new e2 generation e195 and we'll be having a look into what makes the e2 generation such a stunning success we'll be looking at what testing they have to go through in order to earn their airworthiness certificates but all of that later to come before we do so let's just remind ourselves of what happened yesterday Hello and welcome to Embraer TV. We are live from the Paris Air Show 2017 on day two of the action. Wow, what a plane. The E195 E2 Profit Hunter in flight. And now we're about to see the KC390 in flight. It is the largest aircraft ever developed by Embraer. Development began in 2006, and it was after a request by the Brazilian Air Force for a new aircraft. Wow, what a fantastic flight display of both the E195 and the KC390. I can't even decide which one I like better. It is currently ahead of schedule with its testing program, am I right? It is, it is. It's also something remarkable uh, our guys I have to congratulate our teams they're doing a, a great great job it's very uh, uncommon even rare yeah. in our industry to have programs on time and we are absolutely on time uh, on budget uh, and the airplane is meeting the specs so great results it's not just the executives that think the E2 program is a real winner we were speaking earlier to some of the engineers who have had the privilege of working with the airplane Very new aircraft with focus on robustness, maintainability, and reconfiguration. We optimize the entire passenger living space by integrating the seating panels, overhead beams, passenger seats, creating a unique environment. So let's talk a little bit about the, the executive jet side of things. And what is it about Embraer's executive jets that gives them the edge over their competition? Well, it all starts with innovation. I mean, 47 years of innovation is the key for all of the brands, whether it be executive jets, defense, or commercial. And through that innovation, it allows us to engineer, design, uh, technologically advanced uh, assets in the executive jet space that provide performance, that provides characteristics of cabin and comfort, uh, that allows for us to deliver a value uh, to the customer experience. Paolo, how nice is it as a, a supplier of airplanes to have such a close relationship with an operator? Oh, this is great. So, of course, Air France are top line in the world. And uh, not only that, but uh, I believe that uh, this relationship in Brazil and France, France in Brazil, so we are very close also, right? And uh, Air France is a great customer. It's at a top airline. They are very demanding in a good sense, which is very good to us because it helps us also to always raise the bar, right? And serve better our customer, understanding more their needs because their success is gonna be our success. It's not vice versa. So it's their success first, is gonna be our success. So we are always looking to that, to be more efficient, to develop uh, not only products, but services also that will, will achieve the, their targets. So for us as a manufacturer, there is not, uh, nothing else better than have a repeating order from your uh, right clients. And Mr. Malcolm, what does the future look like for your relationship with Embraer? We will see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will negotiate in a minute. <laughs> well, the, the future, of course, we have, uh, as I said, uh, 40 uh, aircraft uh, of Embraer. So uh, uh, our relationship is built for a long time. And uh, perhaps we will have more. Yeah. <laughs> Important to mention in this regard that uh, Air France KLM Group, they have 75 yeah. players. Uh, so KLM it's, a, it's, it's the largest cars. fleet in Europe. Yeah. 
I was lucky enough to be able to grab some time with Embraer's president and CEO Paolo Cesar a little earlier on as well and find out exactly from him how the last three days have been such a success. Paolo, thanks very much for taking the time to come and join us here. How's the show been for you? Oh, it's been great. So I think it's uh, not only the weather, right? It's been very oh, great, it's right? It's boiling, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. No, this is the largest and, mo and, and the most important air show for Embraer ever. So when we look uh, through this window here and see all these aircraft that Embraer brought this year, brand new, right, platforms, state-of-the-art aircraft, right? So this is the best of the best in each of the segments. So we are very happy. Does it make you very proud sitting here, looking out over the static display to see so many aeroplanes that you've helped bring to Paris? Absolutely. So when uh, we saw the, the KC-390 uh, flying, right, so the first flight on Monday, uh, the flight display and just after that, and just before that, the 195E2 also, uh, beautiful in the skies of, uh, of Paris, uh, Bourget area, that was really amazing. And uh, it, shows, uh, uh, it shows in a very high tone the level that Embraer achieved in aviation. Right? So I remember I joined the, uh, the company 20 years ago and uh, we were flying with the ERJ-145 family right, at that time. So when we look back and see now uh, the, uh, the uh, a number of new aircraft platforms that we have brought here, KC-390, the uh, E2, 195E2, and the Legacy 450. So it's great. So it's really uh, something to be very proud of. And what about E195, the E2 generation as well? I mean, they're, they're, it's an incredible aircraft. There's been a lot of expectation from it, and that displayed as well, didn't it? And it wowed the crowds. Huge expectation. I think when uh, we talked to the customers here that went to see uh, uh, our mock-up, uh, right, and also the uh, uh, seeing the flight of the 195. So everybody is very uh, much bullish and want to understand more about this aircraft because this is the most efficient uh, aircraft in the category. Right, so we are delivering 24 percent less uh, fuel burn uh, when compared to the current 195. We are achieving economics that are very close to the narrow body right family of aircraft. Uh, why the trip cost is much lower. So this will deliver a lot of value to our clients. So this will be a tremendous success in the world, right? The E2 uh, right family. And the 195, so we are betting a lot because we have grown the aircraft a little bit. So three more rows and uh, uh, combined with a new wing, a new engine. Right? So this will be the most efficient aircraft in the segment. What I liked uh, earlier on, we were I think it was Monday, I was sat down with a couple of the executives watching the air display, and they were looking at their watches thinking, oh, the E195 should be in the air now, where is it, where is it? But it was so quiet that yeah. you couldn't even, you didn't Absolutely. even know it was in the yeah. air, and that's perfect isn't for it? Airline, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Very quiet, amazing. And We've had droves of people coming through the chalet and the venue here at Embraer. What's the feedback that you've been getting from the customers? Oh, excellent. Yesterday we had uh, uh, our reception yesterday evening in a beautiful place, right in, at, the, at the Boulogne, and uh, was crowded. So uh, customers were you know, in a very good mood. A lot of uh, uh, compliments to Embraer of, on what we have achieved. Our clients, existing clients, very happy with the service we provide, with the products that we are doing. And uh, so I'm sure that Embraer is set for a bright future right, going forward as these uh, aircraft start now to deliver next year. Both KC-390 and also the uh, E-Jet family uh, uh, E-2 with the 190. So I'm uh, very much sure that it's going to be a great success. And Embraer are a company that strive for excellence and they champion the customer. This is, at Paris, a front for that. Do you think that Embraer have been able to achieve that? Well, I think we are, I think we are proving uh, to the whole world here that uh, innovation is in our DNA, right? So uh, both innovation is in our DNA and also be very close to our customer and bring value to our customers. So this is very important. And we are achieving that in a very high tone. So what's next for Embraer then? After Paris, what do you see happening over the next 12 months? We will continue to work very hard 
uh, to make sure that uh, we will continue to be on time for the certification of the uh, uh, 192 in the KC 390. We are putting more focus on business jet as well to make sure that uh, uh, we'll be even more efficient and deliver more value to our customers uh, in services and also right in the product. And uh, so that's what we have to achieve now in the next 12 months. So it's really to make sure that these machines will be flying and delivering to our customers next year. So uh, we are very positive on that. And Paolo, what's been your personal highlight of the show? My personal highlight, I'd say, uh, well, it was more about him, but I'm really uh, uh, astonished uh, with what we have accomplished here. So we are, um, uh, we have grown our our chalet here, right? And it's so it's so uh, nice. It's so uh, I'm I'm so proud to see uh, the number of of people that we have received in our chalet this year. Right? from the military side, from uh, our customers around the world. Uh, our chalet was very, very, very busy. And I'm, I'm very pleased to have achieved the level uh, that we have achieved this year here by bringing all these products and have our chalet crowded every day. Paolo, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely, thank you. Well, a little earlier on, I mentioned that we were going to have a look at some of the development the E2 program has been going through. And it's not a very easy thing to bring a brand new airliner to airworthiness. It has to go through a lot of testing, a lot of rigorous testing, and it relies on lots of people to make that happen. One of the tests the aircraft has to go through is a wing bending test. And we've got some footage for you of that test being carried out. And just have a look at the jubilation on these engineers and the pressures that this airplane is capable of going through. Incredible, isn't it? Just to see how far those wings can bend. And indeed, when you look outside the window of the airliner, you will see the wings going up and down like that. But it just shows you how far they're pushed before they will break. And that is pretty good testament to the engineers that make that happen. Now then, a little bit earlier, I was lucky to speak about the finances of Embraer and interview Jose Filippo, who's the chief financial officer. So, Filippo, great to see you. Could you just tell us a little bit about what you do? Okay, I, I'm responsible for the financial area of Embraer, which includes the, the, the treasury area, the accounting area, so all the books and the, the, the financial statements of the company is done in our area. But I also handle the investors relation area, which uh, deals with our capital market, especially our shareholders, because we are a listed company. And uh, so we, we have shareholders that uh, we have to have permanent contact with them, not only the ones that has our shares, but also 
the ones that uh, that uh, potentially can buy our shares. So that's that's normally what I do. And I suppose the, the follow the obvious question to follow there with the customers and the investors watching is how are the books looking? No, oh, they're, they're good. I think we have had good performance recently. Um, we of course we have this uh, challenging uh, business uh, and the world economy mm -hmm. because of the growth that that uh, all the companies have to deal with that situation. But I think we're doing a good job in terms of uh, sustaining the level of our revenues. And we have a level of $6 billion revenues consolidated uh, in a yearly basis. Uh, we are developing an important program, which is the, the, the E2 for commercial, together with the KC-390 military. And we just had new models in the executive jets uh, a year ago that we finalized the development of the Legas 500 450. So we have brand new products into the market which brings a, a, a great opportunity for us to position ourselves to increase revenues through sales of those products. Yeah, yeah. And of course it's not it's not an easy time uh, when bringing a new model to the market in terms mm -hmm. of the development process with the E2. But to do so successfully as well with the current e-jets that we've got and all of the other aircraft in the fleet is quite mm -hmm. testament actually to the consistency of the Embraer business model. No, it's it's very important the way we develop this. Embraer has a history of doing uh, with discipline and uh, and attending the, the, the expectations and the plan for development. Yeah. You see many companies, sometimes competitors of us, that are having trouble in terms of overruns or even delays in the programs. I think that is very important, especially when we deal with the investors in the in the capital market, that they put value on the way you you address and how you develop your programs. The, the meeting your forecast is something very important in, in the business of, uh, of shareholders. Mm -hmm. and, and for the shareholders, investors and, and customers, how important is it to have a presence at a major air show like Paris? Oh, it's, uh, that's a good point because uh, the air show is not only a commercial activity in terms of selling or even showing your, your products. It's also an opportunity for us to see investors and potential investors, existing and potential new investors. We have several meetings with them where they ask about uh, how do we see the market, how we see our, our future and how we develop the programs. Uh, we sometimes we invite uh, other uh, executives that to join us in those meetings here, which is a good opportunity for us to explain our business. And especially this year that we uh, have the demos of the E2 and the KC, I think there's a special moment as well. I think it's very, very proud to have that situation. And I think that investors watching that uh, brings a little color on, on yeah. how they see our business. You know? Absolutely. I'd imagine it's very easy to get swamped with the, the figures and uh, all of, the, all of the, 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 the paperwork that goes on in the background. But when you can bring these aircraft mm -hmm. and see them up close and first hand, it yeah. must be yeah. really quite rewarding. Definitely. Definitely. It shows that, like we said, the confirmation that the program is being developed as, as planned and that uh, the real product is, is already operating, ready to be delivered. I think next year we start to deliver the E2. Yeah. Uh, KC-390 is still some some years so, to do, but uh, the sales uh, are starting now. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference between the revenues where you deliver the aircraft and the sales where you sell the aircraft for future delivery. So it's very important. Both are very important in terms of value of the company. So securing sales is also a value creation moment for the company. And uh, now have we got good sales? Oh, I think so. Good, good, yeah. good. And how have you enjoyed the last three days, personally? No, uh, it's good because I, I had a tough schedule the, f the first two days. Yeah. Uh, now I think I have a chance to have some slots empty for me to see the the, the show and see other planes and uh, and the competition. Good. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you very much. Fernando Tiberini, our reporter who's been with us throughout the show here over the last three days, had earlier the opportunity to go on board a, a mock-up, a live mock-up of the interior of an E2 cabin. And he was speaking to one of the designers about its new innovative design features. I'm here with Fernando Antonio, program director of E2 at Embraer. Welcome. Uh, good morning. So I think we're quite comfortable here in first class. For even for a longer flight. Yes, yes. This, those are the stagger seats. They are pretty nice it's for guys tall like us. We have a lot of room, lot of room to stretch our legs. So this is an innovation that we are trying to bring for the E2 family. Basically, those are first-class seats that are 
19 inch apart from each other and we manage also for the same cabin length to have the same amount of seats as of a traditional configuration and we did not only had improvements on the first class seats but also on the economy seats the economy seats for the current generation jets are praised for the comfort so what we did is that we kept all the dimensions so the wide seats we have the widest seats in the market we have the widest aisle in the market which gives a lot of comfort to the customer makes it easy to get in and get out and we decided to improve the seats so keeping the dimensions we brought a lot of new things into the seats we brought tablet holders we 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 brought <coughs> pc power so we we with the new options of economies that we have we are we are offering a wide range of options that can support any kind of customer i can see this cabin is quite big it feels much wider am i right yeah it was a lot of work we started from successful E1 cabin that uh, is recognized for being a very comfortable cabin and we decided to put a lot of lessons learned from the f first generation jets into this cabin so we changed the ceiling so that the ceiling gives a very nice lighting but also is very e easy to maintain even with mood lighting that you can change the color throughout the flight phases but also thinking on maintenance so all those panels they are easily removable so the maintenance can easily access without having to dismantle anything and quickly service the aircraft we also work a lot on the sidewalls so that we have a little bit more of space with those uh, scallops on the sidewalls we added those bezels that is maintenance so you can clean and maintenance the window without having to disassemble the sidewalls so we are thinking a lot on starting from a very successful cabin the current generation's cabin move one step further and what about these overhead bins they look much bigger are they really much larger yes they are they carry up to 40 percent more luggage than the current generation and they are indeed the crown of this interior we designed this interior to guarantee that we could allow every passenger to bring his carry-on and find space on the overhead beam and in order to do that we had to figure out how to put the carry-on luggage wheels first so we would have four uh, carry-on luggage for every row and it was pretty a big challenge is this is not a very big cabin it's a small jet so how to do it we had to rethink everything we did we did think on on changing the architecture of things like the personal service unit right instead of the traditional solution of one big bulky equipment that carries the service unit for two passengers we decided to have single PSUs so I have mine here you have yours there and then it opened room here for the edge of the bag then we change it on the ceiling of the system installation so removing all the cables all the harness out of the way and managed to add the space for the beans and not affecting the, the passenger we have a very uh, successful cabin on the first generation e jets the passengers they love the space that they have and we also wanted not to affect that so another very important requirement was to keep this shape here so this is exactly the same shape as of the current generation jets so when a customer a passenger sits on any seat it has exactly the same feeling exactly the same space but with a beam that carries up to 40 percent more luggage than the previous generation and every customer with his own carry-on carry on luggage which for airlines is very good so they can dispatch the aircraft faster and for the passenger is wonderful because you just grab your luggage get in and get out uh, it's really great and i think it's it's a perfect marriage of form and function that you achieved here thank you very much thank you. 
really is amazing to see how they've managed really to get all of the comforts of a wide body airliner into that of a very smaller air, narrow bodied airliner. Now I just want to use this opportunity to remind you that you can interact with the program. We're on Twitter using the hashtag Embraer TV and if you like any of the uh, programs that we've seen over the last three days, any of the interviews that we've done, any insights that we've given you, you can. You can catch up with them on YouTube and Facebook as well. Now then, I couldn't see Fernando taking all of the fun here at the Paris Air Show. So earlier, I managed to get myself a bit of time and get myself into the virtual reality cockpit and fly one of the new E2 jets. Excellent. You're climbing to 20,000 feet. So awesome. <laughs> We've both done it. Oh, what do you think? Yeah, it's brilliant. That's really, really good. I didn't think it was going to be that realistic, to be quite honest. I thought it was going to be like a computer game. I've played on them at home, but it's awesome. When you put this headset on, all the cockpit surrounds you. It's brilliant. It's really, really good. Now, you're a pilot yourself. Yeah. How did it compare to the real thing? <laughs> Very realistic, actually. I didn't think it was going to be uh, quite, as, quite as realistic as it is. It's amazing how far technology's come, but... You know, from a pilot's point of view, it's nice to have everything within easy reach. So you've got the throttles down here, all the switches, dials, buttons, gauges, levers that I need to access are there. It's fantastic. The view out of the cockpit's immaculate. The heads-up display looks stunning. All of the instruments are clearly presented. It's fantastic. Are you tempted to become an Embraer pilot? Yeah. Yeah, I, tell you, I started out presenting on this job for Embraer, and now I think I'm going to become one of their customers. <laughs> Great, thank you. really is another awesome benefit that Embraer have put on here at Paris. It's the biggest presence they've ever had at the air show in the 40 years that they've been coming here in the virtual reality cockpit and the opportunity to get hands on with the controls of an E2 generation jet is just one of the things they're offering and it was a lot of fun I can tell you. Now then, earlier I was speaking to two individuals, I was speaking to Heinaldo Krugner and also Ian Meyer who deal with the sales side of the e-jets. So hey now, you're responsible for regional sales in Latin America and Africa. Now they're huge regions to be responsible for. Yeah, well, thank you very much for the invitation. A pleasure for me to be here. Yes, they're both huge continents, I have to say. We have lots of opportunity indeed, uh, because we have uh, some coincidences in both markets, which is lack of a connectivity. And our products, we believe, we strongly believe that we can fit the needs to fill the gaps. For, for both regions and, and operations, different kind of operations, different kind of behaviors, and uh, we, we, we suffer of a lack of connectivity. We have underserved markets, we, we can fit, and, and actually what we have already is 75% of the market share in Latin America belongs to us, it's our brand. Wow. But how does it work along the years? Because we can provide services and support and uh, products for 40 seats, our ERJ family, our current fleet, E1, and now, and coming along with E2. It wouldn't be different uh, with Africa. We also have 20 customers flying uh, uh, along the, the continent, ERJs, E1s, and maybe hopefully the E2 in the coming, coming years. Is South America and Africa similar in the way that they, the markets are? Well, it depends on the way you look. I mean, you, we have challenges, but we also have good opportunities, exactly because we can help uh, uh, the airlines replacing old fleets, we can help them uh, growth, network growth, expand their network, and also replace or adjust or adjust the capacity, what we call the right capacity, right sizing their fleet, feeding, distributing, exactly feeding more and more the the, the process of uh, of uh, of helping them put some market share in their pockets, or in, term, in other words put the right aircraft, right sizing, profit. Mm. That's, uh, that's our goal. And what are your targets for, say, Africa? Our force in Africa. Yeah, have you got sort of targets of what you're hoping yeah, to achieve we, we, for the we region? Yeah, we do have. Well, we, Africa is a, is a huge continent, lots of uh, challenges that put this way, but we do believe that uh, exactly the same to the right size that we can provide from 40 seats, that we're, we have lots of them flying around here, right? but also the E1, who is making a very good job here. By the way, 10 days ago, we have the certification of E190 yeah. uh, to fly out of South Africa. It's it exciting, sorry, early. It? So, in other words, the E1, despite of the E2 coming along, it's still a very strong, a robust, a profit, 
uh, uh, hunter as well for the for the continent. And the, the, the two is coming along, and we do have good prospects even for the two in this continent. So we are confident that we can make it in the coming years. How's Paris going for you? Well, it's been very good. I mean, all, all customers and prospects are coming along to visit not only the two, but also the virtual reality. They can fly actually the two. They are loving the experience, and they have the very good feel and look of our cabin, our mocha for the two. They're becoming completely astonished of what the solutions that we've been providing throughout the years and also with the two here. And of course, by the way, the Profit Hunter is being a huge success that Eagle Pantinum knows of the aircraft. They're making strong noise here in the, in the, in the air show. So for us, it's been a, a very good moment to get together and, you know, more and more explore all the products, and services and, 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 and solutions that we can provide in terms of a package because we have family solutions to, to provide. How often can customers come down to a venue and actually fly virtual reality in the yes. aeroplanes that they're looking to buy? It's pretty yes. unique. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they're simply loving it. So the experience of having something not only that you can see but you can feel properly, it, makes, uh, it, it, it brings lots of value for, for the entire conversation that we'll be conducting. Brilliant. Hey, now, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So, Ian, thank you very much for coming down and spending some time with us. Could you tell us a little bit about your role here? Um, per January 1st this year, I took the role of Chief Commercial Officer for Commercial Aviation. Okay. Uh, that means I'm responsible for the worldwide sales. Uh, we have a number of regions. We have five regions in the world. Uh, I'm based in Amsterdam, and from Amsterdam I have an 11-hour fl flight to any of the four regions, uh, either to uh, San Jose de Campos, Fort Lauderdale, China, and Singapore. So you're a busy man. I've been flying quite a bit <laughs> recently, <laughs> yes. And is it an easy job to sell aircraft? It's, uh, it's a job uh, with a long breath. Yeah. You don't go in and sell an airplane right away. It's, uh, it, takes, uh, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of convincing, a lot of relationship building. Yeah. Uh, because it's not selling in a plane, it's, it's a partnership for a long term. So you sell the plane and then the plane flies for 20, 20 plus years. And you need to support the plane, so you need to make sure that the customer and Embraer fit together um, and work on that relationship, obviously. And what regions of the world are you finding you're focusing more sales towards at the moment? Uh, we have a very strong focus at the moment on Asia and China. Uh, obviously everyone knows that's, that's a huge growth market uh, maybe not the double digit we saw in the past but single digit but that single digit means still that in absolute figures it's more than what we had in the past uh, and, and there's a big development also in terms of development of aviation in those markets and we think uh, with the opportunities that are emerging on the regional market uh, that we are well positioned to, uh, to bring our uh, Egypt fleet into China so uh, in China and Asia. So we are, uh, we are focusing hard on the Singapore office and on the Beijing office and we are investing in uh, trying to, uh, to increase our sales in those regions. Now we're coming towards the end of the Paris Air Show for Embraer's involvement. How's it been for you? It's been a great air show. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, it's great to have the customers visit the chalet and to take them out walking, show them the plane, show them the mock-up. Uh, I think that's that's really showing what we're selling. I mean, it's it's uh, it tells a thousand things more than showing a picture on a on a PowerPoint or uh, showing a picture of a seat. Um, you can actually feel the seat, experience the cabin. You can see how it will look like in real life. Uh, you can experience the cockpit from inside. So these shows are very important. Um, it's also great from a perspective of, of announcement of deals. Mm. So uh, yesterday we did the uh, press conference. And we announced uh, several deals uh, to the market, starting with the E1, uh, which is important also to show the market that even though the E2 is coming, the E1 is still a very important market for us. We need to support that going forward. The customers like the product, so we had four customers signing up to incremental orders for E1s. Uh, we had Fuji Dreams, we had Japan Airlines, we had KLM, and we had Balavia. Smaller number of orders, but incremental to their fleet. Yeah, so it proves the, the the satisfaction of our customers with with our product. And you've got quite. You have to win the sale with every single one of those airlines as well. Absolutely. So it proves that the aircraft's got breadth across a lot of different customers and operators. Yes, and they're all ordered from a partnership. Yeah. So the partners see the performance of the aircraft. They like the product. They know the customers like the product. They like the reliability of the plane. 
uh, and that all comes together in a demand for more of the same type. So we're very, very pleased that we could order uh, or uh, add a number of E1 orders to the portfolio to the to the backlog. Uh, in addition to that, we announced uh, a placement with a new customer in South Africa. Uh, it's South African Airlink. Uh, they're adding the E-Jets to the fleet. It's not really a new customer for us because they already uh, flew the 50-seater uh, jets. Uh, but now they're also ordering uh, 13 E-Jets. Uh, 11 are from the used market, so they're pre-owned. Uh, but they also added two brand new aircraft which will be delivered uh, uh, later on. Uh, so we're really happy to have that customer on board. And of course, last but not least, uh, we mentioned two uh, big E2 orders. Uh, one for an undisclosed customer, uh, 10 firm and 10 purchase rights. And for another undisclosed customer, unfortunately at the moment, so I can't mention any names, nor regions, um, for 20 uh, firm. So the 10 is 195 E2, and the 20 is 190 E2. Oh, I mean, they're big orders. Yeah, so we, have a, we had a good result at the show yesterday. So what's the future look like then? Well, we are, uh, we are looking forward with confidence. Um, if we look back 12 months, we saw a pretty soft market in terms of uh, demand. Um, but currently, we see a significant number of opportunities that we're talking about. And uh, of course, I can't mention any names at the moment, but we are, uh, we're hopeful that we uh, can bring some of those opportunities uh, to a successful closure soon. So um, we're, we're, we're very confident and we're very uh, positively looking forward to the, uh, to the sales of uh, Bright future of ahead. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much for your time, Mike. Good. Thank you very much. So an incredibly successful show here at Paris and a bright future indeed for Embraer ahead. Now then, a little bit earlier, we, uh, we had a little bit of fun here at the Embraer TV studio. We were able to have a look behind the scenes and we're going to show you now exactly what it takes to bring Embraer to live television broadcasting from the Paris Air Show and you'll see what it takes and what everybody here does from cameras to mixing boards to myself sitting here. Fernando behind the scenes has been exploring. It's been an amazing three days here at Embraer TV at the 2017 Paris Air Show. Hello and welcome to Embraer TV. This is a first for Embraer and indeed the aviation industry as a whole. Now we've been broadcasting on Brea TV over these three days, going out on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. We got great response from the blogging community, from aviation experts. And this was the first time ever for Embraer to do something like that. In fact, the first time ever anyone in the aviation industry has been broadcasting live from an event like that. Right, woo, taking off. Everyone. Now, we hope you enjoyed watching it. We certainly had a great time putting it all together for you. And we thought you might like to catch a glimpse behind the scene and see how we all put it together. So, this is where everything happens. This is the Embraer Pavilion. So I think we should go take a look inside. So here we are inside the Embraer Pavilion. We have a section here with the lovely Sarah and the lovely Kirsten. Say hello. Now they're making sure that all the guests feel very welcome here. Over there behind the screen is the E2 cabin mock-up, where we sat on these very comfortable stacked seats in first class. And back there is the virtual reality experience. We have Biliana, Kimya and Will taking care of things over there. But now let's take a look at the TV studio and see what's happening there. I think they might be filming, so let's watch them. Yes, they're doing an interview, so we're just going to walk past here. So this is the nerve center, the hub, where everything comes together. So we have Matt sitting back there. He's the one who makes it all technically possible. We have Jordan, the director. Jordan, the director, sitting there, and Laura, the editor. And this here is Paulo Cesar, the president and CEO of Embraer. Hello. Hello. Just reviewing his interviews. I'm sure he looks great. After having had a look behind the scenes, I managed to speak to some of the people involved in this project. Embraer came to us and need to build their digital presence 
Um, so us, Gravity uh, and Embraer worked closely together for many months, building huge content structures and putting together specialised broadcasting teams to bring you this live show. So some of the challenges we faced were managing busy schedules, uh, ensuring the technology is working on time every time, and that the messages that are being delivered via content are actually aligned on brand strategy. And the good thing is that with everyone's effort, everything's come together perfectly and it's been an absolutely great show. The reaction uh, for the streaming on Embraer TV is being really well. People are reacting and commenting, the customers are enjoying it and even the executives are having a good time giving the interviews. Just giving you a good idea of the in-depth nature that Embraer have gone to to maintain a presence here at Paris 2017. The largest presence they've ever had at the air show in the 40 years that they've been coming here. Now then a little bit earlier we need to, uh, we were we're talking to the president and commercial and the CEO of Commercial Aviation, John Slattery, who wanted just to take a few minutes of your time to talk about what he has felt it's been a really, really rather successful show here at Le Bourget. And we're going to pass over to him so that he can speak to you, the audience, the employees, the investors, the shareholders, everybody. Here's John. Sorry about that folks, there's been a slight technical difficulty, but we'll do our best to get that message to you a little bit later on. We're going to take a short break now, but if we do get it back online, we'll let you know. Well, here we are on, uh, on Wednesday, uh, which is the typically the last day for a lot of folks here at the Paris Air Show. It's not for the Embraer folks, we have a full day again tomorrow. Uh, this was a momentous show for us. We had the KC-390, the second largest aircraft ever produced uh, in the continent of Latin America. And of course, my baby, uh, the 195E2, the largest jet ever built uh, on the continent. Of course, the largest aircraft ever produced by Embraer. We had last night our customer event. We had over 350 people join us. We had a, the biggest physical presence we've ever had in our chalet. We have our mock-up. Uh, the new mock-up of the E2, the Virtual Reality Center. I think between I and my colleagues, we had something like 105 meetings over the course of the last three days. We're now within 12 months of entry into service of the 190E2 with Vidro in Norway. Uh, the buzz is palpable when you come to the air show. And I, I just want to take the opportunity here on uh, Embraer TV, uh, not only to talk to the customers, but just for one brief moment to thank my colleagues uh, who've worked so hard to make this show the best success we've ever had. Thank you everyone in Embraer. We live for the challenge. It really has been a testament to a lot of hard work that's gone here by everybody at Embraer to make the show such a success. Now we're nearly running out of time everybody, but from us here at Embraer we've been privilege to offer an exclusive insight into how Embraer works from the people who make Embraer what it is. You know, they strive for the customer, they strive for excellence, and they're very much the embodiment of Brazil and the culture, and they embrace that in everything that they do. We've had amazing flying displays from the two largest aircraft that Embraer have ever bought to the Paris Air Show, the beautiful KC-390 cargo aircraft, and of course the Profit Hunter itself. We've heard testimonies from customers and operators who have been connected to Embraer for the last two decades and who still maintain a beautiful relationship that will continue thriving into the future as well and looking ahead to the future as well we've looked into the development of the E2 program we've announced new customers new sales and everything so it's been a very successful show and I'd like to say that on behalf of me Arthur Williams and all of the team here at Embraer TV I hope you've enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time <laughs>